Are you ready? <laughs> I'm extremely happy to be here because today is a very historic occasion for all of us at Dow, and I am grateful. Let's walk that way. I am grateful. You're extremely pleased to be I'm here. I'm extremely pleased to be here. Yes, extremely pleased to be here, Steve. This is my friend, Andy. And my name is Mike. Today, I'm holding the camera. And that's okay if it's, yes, sure. and of course. It's, a, it's a good thing to know. Exactly. Andy is about to go on live television in front of 300 million people. They're going to think that he represents one of the largest companies in the world, which he doesn't. And that's why he looks so nervous. Should I typically just look yeah, right into exactly. the camera? OK. Andy's about to tell a really big lie, which unfortunately is going to wipe $2 billion off one company's stock price. But before I tell you this story, one minute. I guess I should tell you how we got ourselves into this situation. Troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. We're heading across the river. Wash your sins away in the tide. It's up. Hi. My name's Mike. And I'm Andy. And uh, this is a movie in which the two of us fix the world. Aren't we fixing the world? Yes. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> What we do is pass ourselves off as representatives of big corporations we don't like. We make fake websites, then wait for people to accidentally invite us to conferences. My name is Fred. I'm from Halliburton. My name is Hannaford Schmidt. I'm with the World Trade Organization. I'm from Arizona. Uh, my name is Francisco Guerrero. Oh, we're Lou Hawkmax. Hundreds of oil and gas executives were duped today. Louisiana officials are taken for a ride by the Yes like Men. The Yes Men? The Yes Men, anti-globalization activists that travel the world pulling pranks at corporate events. And a bunch of lefty protesters. World-renowned troublemakers. Sick, twisted, cruel. And, and what they do is really to take absurd ideas, and they present these ideas in all seriousness. The group has done this many times before. They have a track record of getting away with it. So, how did this happen? Equity International says the imposter showed up... At home in our underground headquarters, it was time to start planning our next mission. Tens of thousands of Iraqis have died. Worries are growing among top government and business leaders about the surge of food riots. Markets continue to shake. Unemployment is up. The oil companies reported the highest profits in the history of the world. But with so many things going wrong, who should we go after next? We got our answer when a text message arrived. Dow Chemical had just bought Union Carbide, a company that became infamous in the 1980s. You remember the 1980s. Challenger, Chernobyl, Bhopal. Bhopal? In 1984, when Union Carbide's pesticide plant at Bhopal exploded, at least 5,000 people died within weeks, and 100,000 more remained sick for life. 
It was the biggest industrial disaster in history, but Union Carbide settled with the Indian government for $470 million, meaning most of the victims got less than $1,000 each. Now, I just want to say to shareholders of Union Carbide that I am confident that the victims can be fairly and equitably compensated without a material adverse effect on the financial condition of Union Carbide Corporation. There was little adverse effect on the shareholders, but in Bhopal, people continued to suffer. When Dow announced it would buy Union Carbide, there was finally hope for justice. Dow said it would compensate victims of Carbide's past negligence and promptly paid over $2 billion to 14 asbestos plaintiffs in Texas. Dow could do for Bhopal what they'd done for Texas, but we knew they wouldn't. So we decided to do it for them. We set up a fake Dow chemical website, DowEthics.com, and we waited, and waited, and waited. Then one day, we got our chance. You have mail. We'd just been invited to a conference on international finance. Some of the biggest banks in the world would be there. These were the kind of banks who help companies like Union Carbide and Dow do what they do. A company might say, we're going to build a shoddy plant in an underdeveloped country with a corrupt legal system. The plant might explode and people might die, but we'll make a lot of money. And the bank comes back and says, great, sounds like a plan. What could we possibly do to show bankers what was wrong with this logic? So right now I'm painting Gilda, the gilded skeleton, actually the golden skeleton that we're going to use in the Dow Chemical Lecture in London at a financial services conference in just a few short days. The only good skeleton is a gold skeleton. In case Gilda didn't scare them enough, we had a backup plan. We rented a theatrical pyrotechnics unit here so that we can oh, yeah, thank you. make a big puff of smoke. Ah! Oh my God. We're on our way to a conference, and Erastus Ham is going to be speaking at the conference as Dow Chemical Company. Our plan was to have Dow demonstrate for the first time ever exactly how they calculate the cash value of human life. Would this make the bankers think twice? It was time to find out. Thank you very much. On May 1st, we are releasing the beta version of Acceptable Risk, the world's first market smart risk calculator to help you find out instantly what risks are or are not acceptable from a bottom line business perspective. Will Project X be just another skeleton in the closet? Something your company comes to regret? Or will it be a golden skeleton? A complex case is IBM's sale of uh, technology to World War II Germany for use in identifying uh, certain populations. This was very bad, of course. But no one can deny they were profitable. And although the issue remains a skeleton in the closet, in retrospect, it is quite clearly golden. Now, you may have heard the joke. How many Americans does it take to screw in a light bulb? 12. One to climb the ladder and 11 to file the lawsuit. 